Ever since GCN started, just over three years ago, I've had constant comments saying that I am a Bradley Wiggins wannabe and I want to be just like him. And that actually is completely true. So you can imagine my excitement to have him sat next to me for a full-blown interview here at the start of the Dubai tour. Now, to make things differently, a bit different to normal, I've been asking various pros and ex-pros and even some other sportsmen for questions for Brad that he might not have heard before. It probably won't be like that, but we shall give it a go. But to begin with Brad, you're here at the Dubai Tour with Team Wiggins, which started last year, of course, after Paris-Roubaix for you. Uh, why are you here, and what does it mean to you to bring your own team, effectively, to a race of this calibre? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a huge honour, really, you know, to have a jersey with your name on it. Um, you know, it's quite... Uh, it still hasn't sunk in, really, the last year, and obviously being able to do the hour record with a jersey on my back with my name on it, and then seeing just seeing the guys walking around, coming back from their ride earlier. You know, the kit's a bit more spruced up this year, it stands out a bit more, the Wiggins is bigger. Uh, and slowly but surely, you know, it's kind of getting out there. Obviously, all sold out at Rafa last year, and you see people around London wearing it. So, it's um, you know, and then obviously, people are just mention it in reference now, like he's going to be riding for Wiggins, even when I'm present. So it's become its own sort of entity now, even though it's my name. And that's took a long time to get used to, actually. It must give the other lads quite a bit of confidence as well, because you know what it's like in yeah. continental teams normally. If you come to a big race with pro tour teams, you're kind of put to one side in the bunch normally. But with your name here and yourself actually being here, it must be. Yeah, I mean, I like to think so. I think I'd like to think that, um, you know, that with us being present and with me being there, like a bit like Owen last year at the Tour of Britain, you know, we were up there mixing it with Greipel, Cav, and we weren't, we weren't making any friends by doing that. But at the same time, you know, we got numbers on our back and. I kept saying to the lads, you know, we got just as much right to be there as they have. And I suppose in having won the tour and that there, these guys are less likely to kind of tell you to do one if I'm trying to lead out a train as well. So I think it, it helps in that sense. Definitely you get a bit, lads get a bit more leeway. Ian Boswell, what is your favourite pro cycling kit of all time? Um, that's a good one. That's a good question, actually. I am like a mad fan of Sean Yates and always have been and I had the privilege for him to direct us when we won the tour. I'd have to say that mid-90s Motorola Sean Yates in that British champ Sean Yates jersey. Short shorts? Short budgie smugglers. You don't wear anything like that though. No I don't but that is my favourite kit of all time. Question from a former teammate Jeremy Hunt. He says what's your best ever power for one hour and for five minutes? Yeah so I, I so the hour record, I didn't have cranks on at the hour, but based on lap splits, air pressure and everything we'd done in training before, they, they worked out about 5.52 for the hour at London. But my best ever was London Olympic time. 5.52, no. Yeah, oh, sorry, 4.52. Threshold, 4.52 was the uh, London Olympic time trial. So that was 50 minutes long. Yeah. And I had uh, 4.72 for, uh, for 50 minutes. We got one from Lee Dixon ex-pro footballer. Was that the most pain you've ever experienced on the bike and what on earth did you think about for an hour? Um, it, it was probably more psychologically painful than physically. I mean, physically it wasn't any different to anyone who rides a bike knows what that feeling's like when you're suffering. So it wasn't any different to the last 10 minutes of you know, the Olympic time trial or the world's time trial or climbing Von 2 in 2009 trying to hang on to that group of Lance and everything. Um, but psychologically, you know, it's just watching that countdown each minute, that was, that was really tough, yeah. And it was just there in front of you. And every 15, 16 seconds, obviously, you come round and it still hasn't changed one minute. You know, you've got to do four laps before it changes. Vincente Reigns, another former teammate. When did you suffer more in your career? Was it at the Giro in 2008 with High Road and the Gruppetto, 2012 Tour or the hour record? Um, yeah, I probably, probably my first year or actually more than them three, really, yeah. was, you know, the 2012 and the hour record, obviously, you know, the form was good. So when you, when you know you're going fast, when you know you're leading the race and when people are getting dropped, you know, the pain is never as bad as when you're getting dropped or... Um, but, yeah, 2008, that was a tough year. <laughs> but the, my first 2003, I just remember it being horrendous and getting 10 days into the race, still thinking, well, we're not, we've just done half of the race now. I've got halfway to go and I'm already... You know, they'd come knocking on my door in the morning to get me up and uh, I just, I didn't want to be there anymore. I just found it so gruelling and, and in the end we got eliminated three days to go, a massive group of us, so that was probably the, the most I've ever suffered really. Oh.
We shall finish with a fellow sir, in instance, Chris Hoy. Can you ask Brad if there is any truth to the rumour that when you eventually retire from cycling, you plan to have your own TV show doing impersonations of celebrities? Um, there, there isn't any truth in it, no, but I mean, I'm always open to... I, 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 I still don't know what I'm going to do long term yet, you know, kind of... Uh, whether it's broadcasting or anything like that. But I mean, I've got the team and, you know, kids' bikes and things coming along, which are all sort of grassroots based with remaining in cycling. But I would like to broaden and do stuff outside of cycling, um, just because I've got a lot of other interests outside of cycling. And I'd love to uh, have a go at doing maybe something a bit more serious rather than just constantly <laughs> playing the fool. Right. Cheers, Dan. Thanks very much, Brad, for your time in what's going to be a very busy year for you. Uh, we have got a couple more videos which you might want to watch just now. So if you click just up there, we can see our look at Brad's bike from the Tour of Britain just last year. And down here is an interview that Matt Stevens did with Peter Sagan at the Vuelta in 2015. Oh, and you might want to subscribe to the channel. That's that little box just in the middle. Cheers, mate.